memory is something that we live in all the time, live with. But the memory of a place it is fascinating. I left Mogadishu 1989, so 30 years. Mogadishu was in 90. I've been uh, away from Mogadishu, Somalia, for the last 28 years. Satan Sana. Delki Yohansumuga, Leh Yalawatan Sano. When I, you know, close my eyes, Mogadishu is that beautiful white villas and the Indian Ocean. And every Friday going to the Indian Ocean and just listening. There's a special noise that comes from the ocean. The bell of uh, Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean. color <laughs> Oh, Mark Tay Harumer Gadi, or Hamrechid Sophia Antai, or Mark Tay Dakalu, so cover a Korea, or Magarnes, a shilling of Somaligi, Berigasi, Mercat Ukomber Gare, some who had dollar Camaracanca, one dollar dollar Camaracan who was said that she didn't know how to Somalia, a new entry. But no longer Sabah, Laguna, and Magarnes are It was good. Mogadishu was the center of the whole Somali, where if you are from north, south, anywhere, where you come and present your your talent of your of, of your music, of your entertainment. And that was one thing I always remember. Mogadishu was a very serene, beautiful, um, cosmopolitan city with each neighborhood having its own culture, its own dynamic, its own community. Uh, or Jama at Manta High School, the Maiso, Chama at the Itai Free, or the Havel Garibi, or Marka Chamatakas of Hana Shal was in Shal was in Best of memory and one Kaisto, a Maria, I live in Tazui. Why Maka Dalaka Kalatakto, Hodonka, Prova Soranka, Father Tarto, the Hilda Lahayan, Chama Adil Dalaya, Free Kumahala, Marka Wadalki, and was Orokere, a Dunko Warmer Sana, and Hikere. Africa, why Garti hair? I never know so to have a show, or no Abrasha Kusain, the Africa Gert. You would have a Wadanku meet Maratay Admudo in 
dagaal ku dhalanayo ama ma aragtay uu soo oo uu soo urtamay ma aanan qabin maxaa la yiraahda wax experience ya oo dagaal ah aan markii ugu horeysay waxa ay school hoose dhexe aan xaafadii aadagana aha ayaa waxaan dul maray madfac weyn oo ku dhacay meel adiga ilaa iyo 200 tilaabo ama 200 mitir noo jirta oo aan naga fogeyn at that time be ay markii aan maaragtay aan go'aan sanay inaan ka baxno magaaladii muqdisho oh it was a, it was a difficult time because at that time while people are coming to our clinic in sores laboratories are not function blood transfusion bank was not functioning even electricity was not functioning so we used it to treat the patient with gasoline uh, uh, gas activity and with the blood transfusion once we know the blood group of the person we used to give the uh, blood transfusion to one person to another person because you don't have those bottles that you can sustain the, the blood so it was very difficult conditions of shakinini was uh, very uh, scary and uh, sometimes uh, the last day uh, or the war started i still remember uh, the minister called me and he said hey, are you going to produce today the newspaper i said i cannot come because my region where my house is located is been taken over by the contrast so i cannot even move to one sh- uh, one meter uh, close to the print shop so at the time we were absolutely not concerned of anything breaking buildings can be rebuilt but family members were lost So I don't remember consciously thinking about Mogadishu um, buildings or places where we grew up or homes or any of that. Uh, because first thing first, if you will, uh, our priority was finding out our family was alive or not. It was very vivid the way, the way they were telling the stories. My cousins, uh, my dad was still there. Uh, the way they were talking about how they got out actually gave me dreams of nightmares and seeing because i know the streets that they were describing i know where they lived in mogadishu right so i know when they talk about leaving from the bukhara area going all the way to medina which is the south end of mogadishu i know what that route entails and then they'll tell you how many roadblocks in what intersections that they had to negotiate to get through So I started dreaming about that. It was weird, but I started seeing it because you know the place, you know the people. And so I would see in my dreams loads of buses of people, men with guns, roadblocks. You know what was being described is what I was seeing in my in my dreams as well. So sad. It made me really sad. marka anu waxaan u arkahay shanadi la burburiyay ayaan u arkahay in kulayna dadkeedi un ba burburiyay sida anu aan islaahay adu ku soo duulay oo inta nagu soo duulay anaga dalka anaga naga qabsaday ma u sinjirin anaga ma qaadana ku burburinay ay god wallahi aad ay raad 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 xumbu nagu raad ba dagaalkaas dagaalkaas waan qaxnay anagu wax dadkii kiin ay u qaxay baan ha imagine yani وقف وحتى هاي أقوني هنا ومشروع بعد هاي ستة مشروع بان يان مدح وينك ويا كهر يان كاها دبي تدارك تركها ومشروع ديسنتراليزيشن كوح برشدة ويل بام كوح فنجريني وعنها سرقال كي قيبته كوح برشدة مركا دبي تدارك تربانها مركا مالين تحمر وقب دلابانا يدقالكو I was going to New York in a marka hishis ka wel bank in a say is a waka so ani yo director ki marakte mashru amada ka marka in back bu nagu yeshe qaxotiba noqday imagine marka ka qaxdo hamar ed kenio 
kini atku gasho atku gasho lug iyo de kolo baabur meel kula galo yani rafaad ka halka ka dhacay wax you cannot imagine ma ma yani ma soo reen karo runti in dibta dadka Soomaaliyeed soo gaadhay impact soo ka we were the heart of the economy of the country so there is a lot of memory and there is a lot of anger in me when i saw uh, what we have built it so many years uh, uh, has been destroyed in just a couple of days. It took 40 years to print, uh, to produce and to build uh, all the technology and, uh, and machinery. That is a level of uprooting for that generation, for my grandma to come out uh, of Somalia, of Africa, and to come to North America. To me, that was a major sort of like a shift. It's like uprooting your your settlement. So that, I remember, you know, wanting, because we started the process and all that, wanting to make sure that they, yes, they boarded their plane, they're coming. But then after hanging up the phone, thinking about the ashes on that plane and what that meant. And I remember breaking down and, and crying on my own in my own bedroom thinking, this is, this is a, a shift in, in, in our settlement process, right? This is not only my sister and her children with her two generations, but this is like a third generation of an elderly person coming. I say I'm coming in and Civil war could sit out there, are they? Marka Sidan Kushi again at the Hof Marki or Wahbadan in Tawahi Sugu or Wadi Badanta Marka Wasugne, El Hadden of Wasugna Marka Tas, and I'm going to hard go away and Karna that Katrias brother or Hawaii, where his Kaiman Haya Machirano and at Kakabasha. Uh, and it's interesting, different people have different ways of coping. My coping was to not think about Somalia. Once my family members left, I, I stopped thinking about Somalia because I had life to build. And, and, and all of us, many of us, um, had this hope at the back of our head, this, this is going to be a life temporarily outside of the country. We will eventually go back. I remember a lady in a tea shop, came to me, and then she said to me, Doctor, do you know me? And I couldn't get up there. Then she said that you delivered me in Benadir Hospital, my first son. Okay, patients who is coming to you, they know you, but how many people that you have given them? either uh, medical help or assistant or advice. That's why you feel good in yourself. Somebody who you didn't remember that he will say you, you are a medical doctor, you are my medical doctor, so and so and so. Then here, Somalia was not only one way. Many of the way, one got to Allah. The first the first one who had to get the money. So that is the difference. That is the memory I have there, but you don't have here.